Hi, my name's Caleb, and I will be showing you how to make this awesome 3D end grain cutting board. I sped up much of the video to make it more enjoyable to watch. Alright, let's get to it. I started off by cutting my maple, walnut, and cherry boards to 21 inches. This is the length that I will need for the size cutting board I'm building. I then took the boards I just cut over to the table saw to rip them to my desired width. I set the fence at just over 7 eighths of an inch for the maple boards to allow me to plane to the final depth later on. These maple strips are going to be square. After I finished cutting the maple, I set the fence at just over 1 and 3 eighths of an inch, again allowing a little extra wood to plane off later. This is the same dimension I want to rip both the walnut and the cherry. After I finished ripping those boards, I have 8 strips of all 3 species. I then took my maple strips and began to plane them to the final thickness. Send each strip through the planer twice on the same depth, but then rotate them 90 degrees before the second pass. This is to prevent the maple from becoming rectangular instead of square. Next, I plane my walnut and cherry boards to their final dimensions of 1 and 3 eighths. I should note the reason I'm sending them through the planer staggered is to help prevent planer snipe, which is something you do not want. Another reason I do this is because if you run just one narrow piece through the planer multiple times, it can wear away at the blade, preventing your planer from planing flat in the future. Since I want my walnut and cherry boards a half inch thick, I resaw them on my bandsaw so I do not have as much waste.
Once that is done, I go back to the planer and plane them down to their final thickness. Now that we have all the pieces dimensioned to the correct size, it's time to cut some 45s on the walnut and cherry boards so we can glue them up. After heading back to the table saw, I tilt the blade to 45 degrees. Make sure you do this before lowering the blade as it will be more accurate. Then I place my maple strip in between the fence and blade so that I would be cutting at the exact size I need. Since this cut would be hard to make without an outfeed table, I had someone on the other side support my work as it came through. After cutting this angle on all my walnut and cherry pieces, I gathered all my pieces and prepared for the first glue up. As you can see, these are what your pieces should be looking like at this stage. I then applied a good amount of glue to all surfaces that would be touching. Then I fitted the pieces together and clamped them as evenly as possible. Next, I wiped off all the excess glue with a slightly damp rag and let it dry for at least two hours before unclamping them. Note that I won't do any more work on these pieces for at least 24 hours to ensure that the glue is completely dry. I did not video all of the glue ups, but it is the same process as I showed you in the first two clips. After I unclamp them, I carefully scrape off all the remaining glue spills with my chisel. Here you can see the pattern is starting to come together. Here are all my pieces after I finish gluing them. Next, I planned my glued up pieces being careful to take off the least amount of material possible. I used the same method of planing as I did for the maple strips by rotating the pieces a quarter turn on each depth and running them through twice. This allows the pieces to stay square. Next I begin making thin maple strips that would go in between each of my already glued up pieces. I first cut them to about the same lengths as all my other pieces. I then ripped them on the table saw to get the desired width I would need. Next, I resaw them on my bandsaw to help make them thin allowing a little extra wood to plane off in the next step.
I then ran the boards through the planer a few times so they would be ready to glue up. I laid out the boards how I wanted to glue them and applied the glue to all the faces that would be touching. I then alternated my glued up pieces with the thin maple strips. I left off the one maple strip that should go on the final edge to apply later. I did this so I would still be able to run it through my planer in the next step. Let the glue dry overnight and you can start working on it the next day. While I was waiting for the glue to dry, I started working on the maple strips that would run across the width of the cutting board. First I ran the boards through the table saw that, so that I would have two good edges for gluing. Next I will glue them together and will cut them thinner once the glue has dried. The reason I am gluing up these panels is because we want the entire surface of the cutting board to be end grain. This will help prevent the board from wearing in certain spots sooner than others, as well as twisting over time due to different grain forces. Next, I removed the dry glue from the last glue up so that I wouldn't gum up my planer. When planing it, I want to be very careful that I take off the least amount of material possible. If I took off too much, it would mess up the pattern. After a few passes to clean the board up, I glued the remaining maple strip that I left off earlier. I make sure to clamp it carefully so that it matches the exact height as the rest of my cutting board. Next, I'll run my glued up maple panel through the planer to clean up the glue joint. I then resaw it so that I will have enough for the entire cutting board. Once the resawing is done, I run it through the planer to get it to the exact thickness that I need. Now it is time for the second to last glue up. I glue the maple panels that I just made on top of the walnut side of the cutting board. I clamp it very carefully to make sure it's touching everywhere and not bowing in the middle. To help with this, I use weight plates to hold the board down in the middle.
Once the glue was dry, I ran the board through the table saw to make the edges flush. I then squared up one edge of the board on my cross cut sled and began cutting out the pieces for the cutting board. I cut mine at just over one and a half inches, but you can do whatever thickness you desire. I set up a stop block so that I would be able to make the same cut every single time. Once I finish, I laid out all my pieces to see how the pattern was looking. I then rotated my pieces up to apply the glue. You want to be really careful on this glue up so that you will have an easier sanding job later on. Next, I sanded the board with my random orbital sander. After spending a very long time trying to flatten the board, I decided to use my belt sander as well. This helped to speed up the process some, but I still ended up sanding for many hours. With the board flat and smooth, I routed over all the edges. And then after some light sanding, I wiped off all the dust and dipped it into a bath of mineral oil. This really helped the board to pop. I then took it out and wiped off all the extra. Once dry, I applied a few coats of beeswax cutting board conditioner to seal the board and give it a nice sheen. And there you have it. That is how to make this awesome 3D cutting board. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos like this.